entertainmentbooter.com Hey everyone, Matt Hay with entertainmentbooter.com back again with everyone's favorite new roguelike Abyss Odyssey. This time I'm just going to kind of do a single player let's play sort of thing. Uh, it's not really a true let's play because I'm not really playing right now. I'm sitting here talking into a microphone to you. So anyways, Abyss Odyssey is the latest title from Ace Team. As you can see, it's got multiple game modes. You have Enter the Abyss, which is a campaign. You got Training. There's a Versus mode, which is kind of a, a local multiplayer, Super Smash Brothers type of deal. Warlock's Journal, that's the stuff you can pick up. And then the usual help options, typical PC game game stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fire up a local single player game. Or we're just going to look at the menus. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is choose your warrior. At first, only one warrior is unlocked, and that is the one to the left, that is Katrian. I'm gonna go with the Ghost Monk, who's a little bit more of a heavy hitter. You can see he uses a two-handed sword, where Katrian is more the single saber type. Next thing you gotta decide is, okay, where do I wanna start my journey down the abyss? So the furthest to the left is gonna be the longest but easiest journey. Middle's kinda in between, and then the farthest to the right, that is the most difficult path. Uh, so for now, I, I'm going to start with Pokuro Park. Reason being is you can buy these things called camp tokens before you even go into the abyss, which is key. Because camp tokens allow you to set up saves at altars scattered throughout the abyss. All right, this game isn't full on permadeath. You can die. If you die, a generic soldier will be reborn and he can save you at an altar. But if you die as a soldier, your game will be over unless you buy one of those camp tokens and insert it into an altar down here in the abyss. You'll notice throughout this Let's Play that you're going to see Area Difficulty X. This one happens to be easy. So each little room within the abyss has its own difficulty rating. Easy being easiest, then there's moderate, and then there is hard. All right, so the world of Abyss Odyssey is completely procedurally generated, meaning every time you play, you will experience a, a different set of levels, a different set of designs. It's never going to be the same experience, so this game offers up high amounts of replayability, which is great, especially considering it only costs 15 whopping dollars. So one of the first things that really stands out in Abyss Odyssey is the lovely Art Nouveau graphic design. Uh, each level of the Abyss has its own unique look. Really no two levels look the same. Here we're kind of in this rainforest, jungle, real beautiful vibrant colors. You got, you got depth to the background. You can see the enemies have color to them. So Abyss Odyssey is just a beautiful game to look at if you're in the video game art. Uh, the crux of Abyss Odyssey's gameplay is you got to make it to the bottom of the abyss to kill the evil warlock who is wreaking havoc in Santiago, Chile. So to do so, you have to battle his minions on multiple levels as you travel further down the abyss. So when you fight enemies, what you'll see is they're, they're not really just scattered throughout the map. Uh, you'll, you'll hit a certain area, it doesn't matter which one, it's all random. And once you hit an area with enemies in it, you'll kind of be closed off into this box. There's like these shadows go up that you can't uh, go past until you kick the enemy's a-hole. So, uh, the combat obviously is the major gameplay, that and the platforming. Overall, the combat is, is, is okay. It's not perfect. The controls are a little flighty. Uh, you feel a little uh, light, especially in your jumping. It almost feels like you float sometimes. And some attacks do have a slight pause after in a, after enacting an attack. So you got to be careful with how you throw out and spam that X button. If you do it too many times, you're going to get caught. You're going to have uh, open areas for attack for enemies to take you out. And they will take you out. So let's kind of watch this skirmish right here. I'll let you guys just check it out and I'll shut my fat face up. <laughs> Alright, as I said before, when you encounter any enemies, you'll kind of be quarantined. And as you saw when I beat the first guy, 
that quarantine disappeared. So uh, basically you want to kill them as fast as possible or you can end up getting kind of overwhelmed with enemies in that little box that you can't escape until you kill at least one of the enemies. Uh, you have an, uh, an attack with X, which is your basic attack. It's basically how I waylaid that little group of bad guys there. You have your jump, which is A. You have B, which is a throw. So again, Abyss Odyssey has a lot of a lot of fighting game controls mixed into it. And then you have the Y button, which is used for your skills. So as your level increases, you will unlock more skills. You're going to have three skills in total, all controlled by Y. So you got the Y button itself. You have up and Y, down and Y. So each one of those will perform a different action. As you can see on the left side of the map, you also have D-pad commands, not douchebag commands, that you can use potions with, antidotes, mana upgrade or mana potions, and the down button. If you happen to possess an enemy, you can actually transform into one of the demons. So that's an interesting part of Abyss Odyssey. Basically, you have this super mana attack. So once your blue bar is all the way full, if you hit the X and Y buttons in battle, you will unleash this devastating attack that usually kills an enemy in one shot, and at the same time you can essentially possess their soul. So if you possess an enemy's soul, it goes to the bottom of your D-pad. Anytime you want to switch to an uh, turn into an enemy or transform, you just hit that D-pad and you will become a demon. So here we're looking at a, an altar. So this is what I was saying where you can use a camp token to save. Or you can check out your skill points. If you have new skill points, you can spend them. So skill points can be used for your special moves. You can further buff them out through damage, mana gathering properties, as well as uh, defensive shield properties. I tend to go for damage because I just like to run in and, and spam my buttons and act like a tank. So I said the combat... Not super tight, but good enough. Definitely rooted in, in fighting game controls. Uh, as far as the platforming, you, you'll notice throughout the last play that it, it kind of looks like I'm a little special with my jumping. And uh, while I'm not going to say I'm the best game in the world, I did encounter, uh, like I said, you, you almost feel like you're in some sort of zero-G environment when you jump. Uh, sometimes you'll get stuck on ledges and other fun things that impede your progress and kind of keep you from going where you thought you were going. But overall, it's not bad. I mean, really, this game is, is, is super fun. Uh, highly replayable, like I said, because you can essentially... Yeah, you'll die if you do not have a camp token. But if you look up in the top left, you look at my, my player bar there, the status bar, you can see I'm a level 18. So you earn XP every time you go down the abyss. And if you die, you actually get to keep that XP and your gold. You'll lose all your weapons and items, but you at least keep your XP and gold. So every subsequent run through the abyss will be just a teensy weensy little bit easier thanks to the increase in XP which uh, in turn raises your health and other good things like that. Those little blue orbs I'm picking up those go towards my mana bar and like I said once that mana bar is full I can unleash a devastating blow to these demonic beast and I can possess one if I so choose to. So like I said, if you don't get rid of these enemies and you're in one of these little battle boxes, if you will, I mean, things can get a little hectic. I'm, I'm essentially getting my ass kicked here pretty bad by uh, this bird man thing and that other dude that looks like his nervous system is all neon. So enemies will sometimes drop health, not that it gives you much. Uh, here we go down the next level. So again, the key is to keep going further, further down into the abyss until you make it to the Warlock's Pit. So the Warlock is the end game, but they're also kind of mini bosses, sub bosses throughout. And again, they are randomly placed. So every time you go down, it's not like you're going to know where they are and you can avoid them. So here's another altar. This is where I can... Take my soldier if my main guy dies and actually revive my main warrior here, the death monk. Uh, and usually this this little shopkeeper is there to sell stuff. So buying items is key, especially weapons. Like I said, you will lose your badass blades if you die and do not have a save token, a camp token, whatever. So anytime you can, you've got a little cash and there's a shopkeeper around, definitely you want to buy a, a decent sword. 
you can also get rings and, and necklaces and stuff like that to give you some buffs. Uh, but honestly, if you ever see a health potion at a shop, buy it and buy as many as you can because having a health potion on hand is crucial. It avoids you having to use the soldier who's a lot much who's much weaker. And it kind of gives you a little peace of mind when you go into some of these battles. So here is one of those mini bosses, like I said. They, they kind of take on... Oh, before I get in there, I notice I just died. So I died, game's not over, not permadeath. But I'm now this much weaker soldier uh, who should be able to take out this mini boss. Back to the mini boss, though. They kind of look like a shadow character, if you notice. It is a, a shadow character of a, another warrior... And they're, they're usually formidable. They're a lot tougher than just the generic enemies. Uh, but I, I kind of got a little cheap here, and I just started spamming the Y button for the soldiers, which uh, with this guy shoots like a, a three-bullet attack. So some battles are tough. Others get a little spammy. Notice that guy came in. I'm almost positive he came in because I just kept spamming my gun. Uh, this is the first time I ever saw that floating uh, kind of... Mexican looking guy come down and be like, hey dude, quit spamming the Y button. Thank you. Alright, so my soldier did it for me. But again, I need to make it to an altar now to revive the true, powerful, and skilled warrior of the uh, ghost monk. As you can see, you can't really pull the map up, so you just got to kind of explore, and that's you know that's a good thing. That's half the fun of Abyss Odyssey, just going around and uh, checking things out. That and appreciating the lovely scenery. Like I said earlier, I mean every level looks different than the last. Okay, so in addition to vases and things you can smash to get loot, there are also these locked treasure chests scattered throughout the abyss. To open these, you need one of those keys, which I just so happen to have attached to my soldier's hip right there. Uh, these locked chests usually come packed with a decent amount of loot, and you're typically going to get at least some sort of consumable, like an antidote potion, a health, or a mana. And if you're lucky, you may even get a weapon every once in a while. So a lot of times, if you see a locked chest... There's probably a bad guy carrying a key around, so you may want to go look and take him out and steal his key so you can get the good stuff. Alright, so at this point I desperately need to find an altar. My, my soldier's health is a little over halfway full. Not good. I know I'm about to get into another battle, so I'm kind of looking around hoping that I, I spot an altar on the horizon, but it doesn't look like I'm in luck. A little cash flow, though. Uh-oh, here we go. Let's see if we can get the soldier out of here uh, alive, because if he dies, this game's over again. Like I said, if he dies a soldier, and there's no camp token in an altar, you are done, and you will go back to the hub world and have to start again. So really, this soldier isn't half bad. The soldiers are different for the warrior class. So the ghost monk, he gets this, again, like the ghost monk, he's a little bit tougher a little bit stalwart. I mean, he's got this this sledge axe and then, then this three bullet shooting gun. He's actually holding his own, even though I'm, I'm kind of just getting my butt kicked by this uh, green looking moss bull. Whoa, there's a flying fish. What the hell was that? And another one. Notice there when I killed that bull, it did drop a key, so I now have two keys attached to my belt.
I ended up kind of relying on this gun attack because I, I found that it, it is kind of cheap because the bullets do spray. So as long as you can keep timing it properly, uh, you, you can kind of get by on the skin of your teeth when you're in a soldier with the gun and just you know, kind of be a little cheap, spam it, and take advantage of the AI. But slowly but surely, my health is getting lower and lower. Still haven't found an altar, so I am screwed here soon if I do not find an altar to revive the ghost monk. But I am going to get some sweet loot. And a health potion. Two health potions now, that's a bonus. When in doubt, go down in Abyss Odyssey. If you ever feel like you're getting lost or turned around, just keep heading down because the goal is to keep progressing further and further into the Abyss. Some levels do have uh, side exits, but that just crosses you into the other path, so you may or may not be getting into a little bit harder challenge if you take one of those side doors, which you can see I considered there for a second. I'm going to check my map. Like I said, see some of the side doors lead in between the different paths if you so choose to use one. This map must be really awesome because for some reason I love staring at it right now. Look at the pretty colors. Alright, mine made up. It looks like we're going right. Loot. Uh oh, just made it to a hard area, and, and hard is definitely a good description of these areas. I mean, they are no joke. Considering my my health is quite low, I don't think this is gonna last too long. And those falling icicles don't help either. But there's always vases to smash. Ooh, jellyfish. Hey, there you go. Look at that. I died by jumping like an idiot. So I did not use a camp token. So you'll see my dead, uh, my dead body is dead. I'm taken back to the hub world. And I will now have to choose where to start and go through it all again. But like I said, see my level is now at 19, so it is not all lost. All your work is not lost. Your, your XP remains, your gold remains, you just gotta start the progress over. But Abyss I see, I mean, it's a really fun gameplay experience. It also has co-op. Uh, you can check out a Let's Play we did of the co-op here. I'll throw a link down in the description section. But overall, for a, a $15 title for the PC, PS3, and Xbox 360, Abyss Odyssey is a very fun experience. It could give you hours and hours and hours and hours of fun because it is so highly replayable thanks to the procedurally generated worlds, uh, the, the training mode, the versus mode, co-op, you name it. And there will be a whole bunch of community stuff once more people get it. So uh, we, we also did a full review, which will also be in the description. I uh, highly recommend checking it out. This is definitely a game to get you through those dog days of the summer video game release, which usually stink. So if you need something to do and you have 15 bucks laying around, I have no problem recommending Abyss Odyssey. So once again, I'm Matt Hay with EntertainmentBoo.com. Thanks for checking it out. And if you like what you see, make sure to sub to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the site on a daily basis because we make you a better geek one post at a time. Thanks again, folks. I'll catch you later. EntertainmentBoo.com